the next video about the developing the two tube uh, the stereo amplifier with two times an ACL80. They are here. Uh, the chassis was made in more or less a classical way. I cannot turn it over because in that case all the crocodile clips etc etc fall out. A piece of wood very well lacquered first with this type of glue. Glue for sewage pipes. Uh, many videos about that ID are on my YouTube channel anyway. And here are the, uh, the two tubes. Here is the uh, transformer to get a negative grid voltage. Negative grid voltage on grid one of the pentode triode tube. And here is the transformer, the blue one, that gives the supply current to the filament current to the two tubes. And I have switched both filaments in series. They are uh, in general 6 volts, officially 6.3 volts at approximately 300 milliampere. Um, well. I'm going to tell more about that. So here is that filament transformer. And you see quite a bunch of resistors and electrolytic capacitors. The issue is that I want to supply this um, tube amplifier with pure DC, even on the filament. When you look to old schematics with these tubes, from the 1960s and 1950s etc etc you will more or less always see that the filaments are supplied with AC and to prevent hum there is a potentiometer that is bridged over the filaments and from its wiper it goes to the minus or the zero and by tuning that wiper the hum can be filtered out switched out kind of phase effect. Uh, but to keep it very simple, nowadays we are on 20, uh, uh, 2022 and we have a lot of uh, other components and well this is a hobby circuit so we can spend some money on it. Here is the schematic at the moment. hope it's visible from this distance. Here is the filament voltage part. Here is the negative grid voltage part. Important to tell, in the negative grid voltage part the rectifier, the bridge rectifier, is reversed in terms of the diodes. I don't uh, want to go too much in detail regarding that, but anyway, the negative grid voltage that this tube uh, needs is, according to the tube data book, in an audio application approximately 8 volts. So I had to make a circuit that with which I could vary that voltage between, say, 6 volts and 12 volts. And that's the reason why I use this transformer. It's a very easy mini transformer that gives out 12 volts. Um, of course, that's a nominal voltage. So in, in general, you will find a higher voltage out. When it's rectified, we are in the, say, 20, vo 20 volt range. And that means that we need capacitors that can handle 35 volts anyway important to tell is that the current is not important, only the voltage is important to give these two grids, these two grids 9, that's grid 1, and here also 9 of that other tube, grid 1, a negative grid voltage. And that negative grid voltage biases the tube to its proper working point so that it can amplify an audio signal in a good way, without distortion. 
And that's also the reason why I've used here 200 K potentiometers. They are here. This is 100 K potentiometer. And this is another 100 K potentiometer. I tested it out in the past and found that I could get every tube properly biased to amplify without a minimum uh, distortion. There are many other tricks and schematics. The most common schematic is that you find here at the uh, cathode a resistor with a capacitor bridge, but this is in my idea a better option, especially for beginners. So, schematic again. Problem with um, uh, filament voltage and when you want to get it as pure as possible, say battery like, on a 6.3 volt tube is that you need a kind of filter to filter out the hum. And that is regarding the voltage where the filament works, work, approximately 6 volts. On such a low voltage, that's always a kind of problem. So I've used here a triple filter. Perhaps you can use a transistor circuit, a Miller circuit. I did not test that because uh, the, of the low voltage. Anyway, so three resistors of uh, 3.3 ohms here, and they bridge. In this way, the electrolytic capacitors, and the result is that the voltage out is approximately 12.5 volts, and the ripple is only 10 millivolts. I want to show that here is that ripple that's present on the filament. It's uh, here is the 10 millivolt scale. So that means that this approximately 10 millivolts. I think that is good. I think there will no uh, hum be generated out of the, the filament into the tube, but I'm not sure. I have to test that of course. And well, this is uh, the, the best result that I could get with this uh, option. And of course, when we are supplying such a tube out of AC, be it 60 Hertz or 50 Hertz, etc. Here is the circuit of the negative grid voltage. Again, 100 microfarad, 1000 microfarad, both capacitors are 35 volts. Here two uh, potentiometers and you can set the negative grid, grid voltage with this. This is only a demo. This is one of the two potentiometers to which you can set the bias, the proper working of the tube. And I turn that potentiometer now and you can see that we can change it from say zero volt up to the maximum uh, negative grid voltage and that's here 12.8 volts. So there surely must be here, somewhere here, in the 8 volt range, um, a potentiometer setting where that tube circuit will amplify with the most uh, low uh, audio distortion. Anyway, and here, perhaps interesting to show, this is the voltage on that um, the grid to which the negative grid voltage is applied. That's grid one of the tube. When I lift up the amplification of the scope, you can see here on 10 millivolts that there is say a kind of noise on that grid. The one of the steering grids of the pentode part of the tube, not the triode part, the pentode part of the tube. And it is also in the 10 millivolt range here. So that's surely not much and I expect good results. 
due to the to that fact. The chassis again, the two tubes here, and uh, the the saying is that every amplifier is as good as its power supply, and that's completely true. Anyway. Uh, back to the circuit, I think I've told everything. These resistors in the filament um, supply unit get a little bit warm. The open voltage of that 12 volt transformer is 15.6 volts AC. But of course when it is uh, loaded with filaments or whatever could could be everything the voltage drops drops down to the nominal voltage for which the transformer was made and that is 12 volt at 1 ampere and approximately 10 watt here i have uh, soldered over one resistor of 270k and a capacitor of 100 nanofarad that's more or less standard, I do that always. Acts as a bleeding resistor and also acts as a kind of filter for high frequency influences. And here you see how the two filaments are mounted in series. So, four and five of one tube, the five goes to the four of the second tube, and the 5 out of that second tube goes to the, uh, the filament unit. That serves it with 12.4 volt approximately, etc. I've used here in both cases a fuse. Of course you can say that's overdone, but when you are a beginner or even uh, when you are not a beginner, it's a good idea to mount here, surely here a fuse. Uh, when you make mistakes, that fuse will burn out, etc. That's a good thing. These transformers, by the way, are have both have a temperature dependent um, element in them. So when they are overloaded, that temperature uh, fuse blows out and you can throw away that transformer. That's also the reason to mount a fuse here. Uh, so that this fuse blows out and not, not your transformer gets completely defective when you misuse it in a certain way uh, by making the current on the secondary winding too high. This is important, the diodes are reversed here. Please take notion of that. That was more or less everything to tell. Thanks for watching. Show the schematic and then we'll pan over somewhat over this tube circuit. Always funny to see that the tubes are working. Say the glow elements. Thanks.